Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second week of writing Wikipedia articles. Uh, we had a, some good turnout last week, and it looks like we do again this week. I'd like to start off this class session uh, by, uh-oh, I am getting an error message. Are people still hearing me? Can someone post in the chat window? OK, good. Well, I don't know what that's about. Um, OK, so uh, I want to start off with, uh, with a little bit of review from last week. And, uh, and I'm going to show you, ah, right, OK, that's I, the away setting. That is probably the problem. Thank you, David. Let me just fix that. OK. So, uh, so let's start off by, I want to show you the, um, I want to show you the page that we have from last week's session and the video that we have. Um, so I'm going to go right into the screen sharing mode. Uh, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to do the, this is the web tour mode where you won't be able to see my cursor or me clicking around. You'll, you'll have it in your own window and you can, you can scroll. So, um, So let's see. So I'm first going to go to the main page for the course and then click on the number one. So is this showing up in everyone's everyone's screen? Looks okay, good. great. So this this page should look fairly familiar from last week. Um, but the main difference is that there is now a video in the upper right corner. Uh, it's got a big red uh, play button in it. So hopefully, if you missed last week, hopefully you saw our email and were able to find this. Uh, I do want to mention that we, uh, we, we had some trouble with the audio. First, we, we got it up a little bit later than we meant to, and then there was some audio trouble with it. But now it's all in good shape. So uh, if you had trouble watching it, uh, my apologies, but uh, you should be able to go back and review any of that if you need to uh, going forward, and we should be in better shape uh, with the with the future sessions. So as you can see in the caption under that video, it, there are three links. There's Wikimedia Commons, YouTube, and Blackboard Collaborate. So uh, we have it available in all three formats. Blackboard Collaborate launches a session very much like the one that we're in right now, um, which permits you to do things like resize the chat window. And, uh, and when we're in this mode, it, it would allow you to scroll through the page and things like that. So it gives you a few extra features. Uh, the YouTube video is pretty straightforward. And we also have a version on Wikimedia Commons, which is in a, a free format. And that makes it possible for us to embed video within a Wikipedia page and things like that, which we can't with the YouTube format. So use whatever one is most comfortable for you. Uh, I think probably for most people, the most familiar thing will be YouTube. But, uh, but the other ones may be worthwhile as well. So uh, also, I, uh, I think if Sarah, if you could. Um, if you could reintroduce people to the Etherpad, uh, we had lots of people jump into the Etherpad both last week and this week, and let's just uh, let's just have a quick recap of what that is and how we're going to use that. Hi, thanks, Pete. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Do you want me to take over the screen, or do you want to click through yourself? Uh, I'll I'll click through myself. So, so I'm going to go ahead and paste the link to the Etherpad into the chat box first. Um, a lot of users are over there already. A lot of people who were using it actively last time. Um, I don't see it loading yet, Pete. So oh, I th that's my mistake. I just uh, I just loaded it in my browser instead of Blackboard. Sorry, I've got a little window confusion going on here. Yeah, I would have had much more confusion myself, which is why I was asking Pete if he wouldn't mind showing it. 
<laughs> but anyway, um, this is something we were talking about a little before the class started, and he suggested I might want to say a little bit about it. Uh, we choose to take notes in Etherpad instead of trying to take notes on Wikipedia because it is a platform that actually allows us to um, all take notes at the same time. Whereas if we were all to try to edit a Wikipedia page at the same time, it would not work for reasons that Pete is going to get into a little bit later today. But so this is great. Pete is showing off the um, the Etherpad format here. And basically it's just a blank sheet. We can add whatever we want to it as we go along. You are automatically assigned a color, and everything you write will appear in that color wherever you write. You can edit, you can hit return, you can help with formatting, you can add your own notes. Um, right now, of course, you can't edit the one that Pete is showing us. You actually need to load it in your own browser. But um, something to notice that is useful about Etherpad is that at the top right where you see a silhouette, you can see the number 38 up there. That means there are 38 viewers right now of this page. If you click that um, little silhouette at the top right, I have a note that, that you can actually edit the one in the blackboard window, which is interesting. I'm not going to attempt that myself. Yeah, um, I think things would probably get messed up if we tried to edit it through here. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to stay on target. I'm going to tab over to Etherpad myself and I'm going to click over. If you if you actually click on the top right silhouette in your own color, you will see that it pops down and you can find your color, type in your own name next to your color. And then if you hit the colored square, you can choose your own color. So if you decide all of a sudden you don't like purple or green or blue anymore, you can switch to a different color. And everything you've written in that color will change to your new choice. So this is a very uh, simple and convenient interface for us all to sort of do collaborative tasks. And um, if you scroll down a bit, you can see that what we've done is we've just started to add today's notes above last week's notes. So we'll continue to do it that way. So we'll just we can always use the same link, and uh, this will be preserved. We can all come back and scroll through it each week. So I think that's all I've got to add about it. Unless you have questions about it or why we're using it. Okay. Sounds great. Um, so uh, I think one thing I really want to encourage people to do is it's it's great that people have jumped in and um, and added their names and, and uh, last week we had lots of links put in there and things like that uh, but feel free to to go further than that if you want if there's um you know if there's something if you want to type up some notes based on something I say or a question that someone asks or some you know some thoughts to pursue later uh, this is really this is a space to innovate this is uh, I mean Wikipedia overall is a space to experiment and play with ideas but this especially is something that it's just for our class you really can't mess it up um, so you know if something might be used useful to you to capture an idea um, of course you can always like scribble it in your own notepad but you can also put it here, and it might be that it's it's useful for someone else, or it prompts an interesting bit of discussion. So, um, please, you know, have at it with with the Etherpad, especially. Okay, so I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to go back to our uh, our course page. Uh, so. And and what I'm actually going to go back to the course homepage. So I'm going to click. Uh, where it says uh, February to April in the banner, which is your way to always easily get to our homepage. Um, actually, you can see here, some of you might remember the video on the homepage, which is sort of an overview of how our pages fit together for the course, uh, was visually a little messed up on the homepage last time. So I, I think I've addressed that now. I think it ought to show up a little more clearly now that it's a video and where to click. Um, so anyone who's just joining us and is trying to figure out how the various pages that we have on Wikipedia fit together, that four minute video is probably your best guide to that. So uh, be sure to take a few minutes and watch that once we're done with the presentation. Um, 
And so I want to also review one of the things that we covered last week was the concept of a user page. So I'm going to scroll down. If you can just scroll down with me to the uh, about a third of the way down this page, you will see uh, a list of all the students enrolled in the class. So hopefully you can see your own name in the list there, your own Wikipedia username. And uh, and you'll see that there are some, some of them are red and some are blue. So uh, if you remember from last week, the red link anywhere you see it on Wikipedia, pretty much, is going to indicate that there is no page there. That the person, so in this case, that that person has not created a Wikipedia user page. And the blue link indicates that there is something there. So let's start off by just clicking a few of the blue links. Uh, I'm going to just. I, I've, I've looked at a few, but I'm going to I'm going to just Peter, are you? Do you mean to be sharing yet. with us? Uh, your, okay, scroll just down and let's see. We can't. We couldn't see the scrolling uh, for us. It just yeah. went. It did. It did change links when when you. Yeah. Are you clicked. Yeah. But until then, we were just seeing the top of the page. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. That's the 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 downside of this is that you can't easily see everything that I'm doing in it, but the upside is that it's so much faster uh, and more responsive than fully sharing my web browser. So um, I, hopefully that's something that we can all just get used to here. But if I do say something that's confusing and expect yeah, to be Yeah, I think that takes a, lot, a little bit of getting uh, used to, actually. Sometimes uh, people will be looking at something. That. He's on the same page. If what he's looking at is not apparent to you, go ahead and just see if you can scroll down yourself, because it just means he's switched into sort of the lower bandwidth mode. And um, thank you. Okay. So, uh, so I clicked on Gracie Z, who is one of your classmates. I haven't actually, uh, I didn't actually look to see if she's here with us today. Gracie, are you here? Uh, or raise your hand. If you are. Um, so, but this is, or raise your hand. Perfect. Uh, so this actually, I think I've happened upon a, a pretty good uh, first example here. She says, uh, "I work for the communication and information sector at UNESCO Beijing." So uh, this is, you know, an, if you're if you're brand new to Wikipedia and you don't know a whole bunch of codes and how to make your page, uh, you know, have lots of images and things like that, this is a really great way to start. Um, just put a sentence or two about who you are and, and why you're interested in Wikipedia. Um, and let's, uh, let's grab a couple others here. Let's see what Abu Lue has to say. So here, uh, here is a more extensive page. Uh, and again, please do scroll through it. So uh, we, we often get students taking this course who uh, who have edited Wikipedia before, but they're, uh, they're maybe interested in expanding their knowledge. Maybe they've uh, only edited in, in a narrow area, or maybe they've only edited a different language edition of Wikipedia, and they want to get more familiar with the English version. So I think that's what we have here. Um, so we, we do get uh, a nice little intro at the beginning, uh, like we saw with Gracie. But then as we scroll down, we see the About Me section has a, uh, a bullet list. So we've got a little bit of formatting here. And then below that, we see a bunch of colorful boxes. So these are known as, as user boxes. And uh, there's sort of a tradition on Wikipedia of creating these little boxes that say something about yourself and kind of trading them around. So uh, if, if you see one of these that you like and you'd like to have it on your own user page, um, all you have to do is click edit so that you so that you can see the code on this person's user page and copy the bit of code that relates to that user box. So I'm I'm not going to get into the details of how to do that right now, but if anyone feels like um, like playing with that, we're going to we're going to do a little bit more work on our user pages later in today's session. So um, I might ask one of you to take the microphone in a little while or share in the chat window uh, something about about how uh, you know how to find a user box that you like or how to copy a user box. So this is something we'll come back to. Uh, let's see. I'm I'm going to just just pull up another. I want to. Um, I'm going to pull up Maynard Clark's. Maynard, are you here today? 
we've got a lot of names here to scroll through. It's nice to have so many people showing up to these sessions. I don't. Oh, I think Maynard actually emailed me that he wasn't able to make it uh, to this session. Uh, actually, but Maynard's someone that identified himself in the chat window. Oh, okay. Hello. Oh, okay. I just didn't recognize your name. Great. So, uh, so here's an even more uh, formatted page. He's got a nice photo of himself and uh, and some structured information. So, again, if you see formatting like this, a great way to learn about Wikipedia coding is to go in and edit and, and copy some of that formatting and adapt it on your own page. Um, and uh, is there anyone here who would like to um, would like me to pull up their page? Why don't you just uh, if so, why don't you just type your name into the chat window and I'll pull that up. Either if you have something you'd like to show the class or if you have a question uh, of something simple that we can. Okay, so Kelsey. Let's see. Okay, so here we go. Agatha uh, is a librarian, has a 20-year-old daughter, likes life starting a new Wikipedia Loves Libraries local history group in Olympia, Washington. This is great. Um, no, this is perfect. Thank you, Kelsey. So uh, actually, do you, um, if, if you've gone through the audio setup wizard, if you'd like, if, if you have a microphone and you'd like to, maybe you could take a moment and just give us a really quick explanation of what, um, what Wikipedia loves libraries is, and if not, I can I can do it. But so, do you see the talk button in the upper left? Okay. Um, oh, okay. So it looks like Kelsey is maybe going to give us a link, uh, which is great. You can put it uh, maybe in the Etherpad would be a good place. And uh, so, Wikipedia loves libraries. I'll just do a really quick uh, intro of that. It's a um, it's sort of a tradition of Wikipedia local groups that where where people will go to a library in their community and uh, and track down some librarians and put together an event at the library where people who don't necessarily have any experience with Wikipedia can come and learn a little bit about it and then maybe use the the library's reference materials to work on a Wikipedia article. So sometimes it'll there'll be a focus on local history. Uh, sometimes there'll be a focus on, you know, if it's a if it's a big library system, like in a big city with an extensive history, maybe people would focus on writing an article about the library itself. So things like that. It's a it's a nice sort of outreach project, and it's something that's been around for several years and is getting a little bit more organized. So I think that's going to be uh, as we as we get in in this session, as we get into uh, some of the ways that Wikipedians find to collaborate. That's going to be a nice bit of context for it. So, anyone else uh, want to share their user page before we move on? I think we are. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit behind schedule here, so uh, I'm not seeing anyone else. So I think I am going to jump into our next segment. So, um, if if you haven't uh, looked at our at the week two class page, you might want to pull that up. I have. I, I just uh, about an hour ago, I put up a. Um, I put up a, uh, an outline on this page of what we're going to do today, so you can see just how behind we are. <laughs> um, so something that I would like to, I, I think this is something that I'm going to let you do uh, as I keep talking, just so I can try to catch up on the time a little bit. Uh, but as, we're, as, as you're looking at that, at our main course page, the one that's still up, our, our course home page, uh, you can see not only do we have links to everybody's user page, but also to everybody's user talk page. So just to the right of everybody's name, there's a link that says talk. And if you click that, you'll get to the, the talk page where you can leave a message for that person. So um, if, if each of you could, I, I think, OK, I don't want to be too distracting with this. Why don't we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for about 30 seconds or so so you can get started on this. and. Um, why don't you why don't you click through a couple of user pages, and if you see something on someone's user page, um, 
maybe leave them a, a quick note about it. So if you see that someone's a librarian and you're a librarian or you like libraries, uh, maybe you can click on their talk page and just leave them a quick note. And uh, really anything. So the the point here is just to make contact. So we're all we're all students. We all understand <laughs> uh, what's going on here. So if it doesn't make a lot of sense, that's that's not really a big deal. So find a, a classmate, click their talk page, leave them a message, and, uh, and I'm, I'm going to start up again in about 30 seconds. I'll then then get and say, if people aren't sure about the easiest way to leave a message, there is a shortcut, which is just hitting new section at the top of the um, at the top of the page, and it takes you right down to the bottom, and you can put in your header and your text. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the talk page of my demo account here, and you can see in the upper, sort of the upper right next to view history, it says new section. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've either had time to do that or you can wrap it up as we're moving forward. And um, I think later in the session, if you if you got a message or if you uh, have a, a question about what you just did, uh, we'll we'll come to that after the after the next session. So after the, so in in about ten minutes, I'm going to give a, a tour now of a, a Wikipedia article, and. Uh, so, and then uh, when we come back from that, hopefully everyone will have, have had a chance to leave a talk page message so we can revisit that briefly. So the article that I want to show you, and I am, I'm going to switch into the more live browser mode now so that you can see better what I'm doing. Um, at least I think I am. Let's see. Well, I seem to be having some technical issues that I don't, I haven't had before. So I'm actually, I'm actually having trouble going into that mode. So I think we're, we're going to stay in the, the mode we've been in, and I'll just, uh, I'll just be really explicit about where to scroll in the window. So the, uh, give me just a moment to pull it up. Okay, so I'm, I'd like to show you guys an article that was written by a couple of our students in the second and third rounds of writing Wikipedia articles. So this is, I, I think, a, a very uh, good example of a Wikipedia article. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, um, you'll see that there are 40 references. And you see it's not a, a terribly long article, so you can tell that they really did a, a, a great deal of research and consulted a number of different references in putting this article together. I think if there's any one single you know, quick indication of how much uh, care has gone into building a Wikipedia article, that's, that's probably it. Uh, it doesn't tell you everything, of course, but, but that's, that's usually one of the first things that I'll look at when I'm, when I'm looking at an article. Uh, another Another good indicator is that it has a substantial lead section. It ha like even though in the table of contents you can see that there are several subsections, uh, even so there is a three paragraph lead section, which again is usually a good indication that someone's taken the time to summarize what's in those other sections. You'll notice in a lot of Wikipedia articles that you might see a very long article that only has a, a one or two sentence lead section, which um, which is often an indication that it's going to be it's going to be a little hodgepodge. It's going to be a little confusing, with lots of bits of information kind of scattered rather than 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 organized and carefully put together. So, but but something I want to point out about this article in particular is that these the students that worked on it 
um, we're actually this is the the Fed interactions the the Fed interactive simulations project is uh, something that came out of the University University of Colorado, and these two students worked. Uh, work for that center, work for that work for that project at the university. And so uh, be, because there's the potential of a conflict of interest, because uh, sometimes people come to Wikipedia to post an article that's really more driven by a desire to do marketing, to get the word out about their project than it is driven by Wikipedia's principles, it's really important to be Cautious about that, and to be to um, to really check yourself and make sure that you're uh, that you're really going by Wikipedia's uh, best practices. So if we look at the, I'm going to click on the talk tab so we can see the talk page for this article. And if you scroll down uh, about one screen just to get past the table of contents, you'll see that they put in a section. They started right off when they started the article with a section called Note on Who Began This Article. So they immediately came in and a note, left a note that said, we created this article, uh, and they, they say that it's through this class, so anyone else looking at it will understand that, they, you know, that, they're, that they're not doing it in isolation of any interest in what Wikipedia is about. Um, and they also, they, they also said that they've paid attention to Wikipedia's guidelines around conflict of interest. So I think we should take a look at that so that you have a little bit of a clearer idea of what I'm talking about. But what this, what this really does is it, 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 it clearly signals to anyone else looking at the article that A, they're trying to go about it the right way, and B, they're open to feedback about that. So anytime you're working on an article like that, about uh, your employer or an entity that you're connected with, there might be there might be different judgment calls about how uh, how far you can how far you can go. You might think that you're being perfectly neutral, but someone else might see an adjective that you include without even thinking about it and say, "Oh, that doesn't belong in an encyclopedia article." So it's it's really good to signal clearly that you're open to that kind of feedback and that you're not being really rigid about what you're what you're trying to put on Wikipedia. And you can see here uh, the the first comment that they got back immediately below that says you did a pretty good job of keeping it neutral. So um, you can so they, they really they, they set a good tone there. But if you if you scroll down in this discussion, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into a, a lot of detail on this, but there is a uh, there's a substantial section called problems due to conflict of interest editing. And you'll see that someone went through the article in great detail and uh, and took issue with some of the ways that they'd approach things. And uh, if you go past that, you'll see that they went through and attempted to get in in uh, in some discussion around that. I I, I jumped in and and uh, responded to that, but then so did the students. Uh, so in this in this class, if things like this come up, uh, generally it's I see my role as more to coach you through how to um, you know how to handle a situation like that than to than to do things on your behalf. So as you can see, uh, they, they did try to address the things in the article per his criticisms, and then uh, check back to see what he thought of that. So this is actually an issue that's of particular interest right now on Wikipedia because, well, let, let me first, before I get into that, I want to, get in, I want to show you the conflict of interest guideline. So I'm going to type in a shortcut, WP colon COI. So this is, uh, um, I guess you can't see me typing in this mode. Um, but if you if you type in the search bar WP colon COI, that will that's a, that'll be a shortcut that that pulls this up for you. And as we go along, you'll probably get kind of familiar with that format. You, actually, as you if you look in the the second box on this page on the right hand side. There's a small box that says shortcuts. Everybody see that? And then underneath that, it says WP COI or WP conflict. Those are indications of what you can type into the search box that will take you back to this page. That are that are shortcuts that will take you back to this page without having to type in the whole title. And uh, most Wikipedia policy pages and guidelines and processes have these kinds of shortcuts. And as you get more familiar with Wikipedia, you'll 
um, you'll tend to remember some of the more important ones, or just get a feel for, you know, you can just take a guess at um, typing in the acronym or the first word of something, and often it'll pull you up to that policy page or help page. Uh, anyway, this if if if, if any of you uh, are here with uh, with the intention of working on an article that relates to your work or your employer where you might have a conflict of interest, I would especially urge you to um, to take a, a close look at this page. Um, and also, it's a it's a timely issue because as you might have noticed, uh, logging into Wikipedia recently. Uh, there, I think it's I think it's maybe now expired, but there was a um, a banner. There has been a banner across the top of Wikipedia saying that there's a, a proposed amendment to the Wikipedia terms of use around uh, around conflicts of interest. So there is a um, right now it's being considered whether people who are editing Wikipedia as part of their job should be required by the terms of use of the site to disclose that fact. So if that's something of interest of you to you, uh, actually, if somebody can find the link to that and post it in the Etherpad, that would be really useful. It's going to take me a moment, so I'm, I'll, I'll leave that to someone else. And if you can't find it, let me know, and I'll, I'll come back to it. So um, I said we were going to come back to the user talk page exercise. Um, so if there's anybody who got a message, can you raise your hand? Or I don't know if you mean raise your hand, here? Pete. I think you mean to click yes on the poll, because otherwise their hands stay up. Aha. Yes, I always seem to remember the wrong feature. <laughs> yeah, so the poll is great. So if you, if you got a message on your talk page, please let us know through the poll. So that's good. Looks like you guys are leaving messages. Of course, uh, there are a number of people who are taking the course at their own pace or uh, just haven't shown up in class for one reason or another. So uh, not everyone here would be getting a talk page message just yet. Uh, but please do, if you are watching this video later on, uh, please do go through that exercise and leave a message for one of your classmates. Uh, because this is, they might not see it immediately, but they'll see it the next time they log on to Wikipedia. So that way you'll all start to get to know each other a little bit. Uh, and, and actually, let me take a moment to some of the, in the past versions of the class, one of the first things that we did was we had students form teams. Um, and I think some of our instructions still reflect that. I, I see that a, a few of our new students have uh, joined the older team pages. And uh, I just I want to speak to that. And I will also leave, uh, leave talk page notes for those specific students. I need to remember to do that when we get off this session. Um, we're, not, we're not doing ongoing teams in this session. Uh, because we found some people dropped out of the course and things like that. And it, it's, um, you know, if you have a team with just three or four people on it and one or two of the people drop out, it makes it hard for everyone else. And then you have to reconfigure. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to have some exercises as we go forward where we do something in in class session, and we'll just form teams at that time. We'll just have people break up into groups of three or four, and uh, and work together in that session. So if they if 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 you find that you're working with people that you like, and that's working well, then you can just form that team the next time as well. But we won't require you to have we won't have an expectation that you're going to have the same team throughout the course. Um, so any any talk page messages in particular that we should take a look at? Oh, I see uh, Glenn found the paid contri con uh, contributions amendment and put that in the chat window. So thank you, Glenn. OK, so I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to go back to our home page in the window I'm sharing. So let's take a look at another uh, another Wikipedia article. Um, I have I have two others that I'd like to look at, and 
for, for kind of different reasons. One of them is the article about MOOCs, which is a pretty extensive article and is very widely read. Uh, and, and the other one is about OER University, which is an article that one of our students uh, has started recently and, uh, and is a, a good example of an article that's just in its, in its early stages. So as we, as we look at these ones in particular, uh, I'd like you to think about what you might do uh, to improve an article like this. Um, I, think, I think the OER University article is going to be a little easier to see that with, so let's start with that one. So OER University is a, a, a project, it's an international project um, that uh, allows universities to, universities join it as members and each university commits to creating uh, at least two free online courses that are available for credit to anyone in the world to take. So you can take the course for free online, but if you want to earn formal credit for it, then you pay to take the exam and, uh, and, and get the credit. And then uh, that credit is recognized by these other universities as well. So this is a, a new and innovative project. It's something that uh, Bob Cummings, uh, my co-instructor, who we haven't heard too much from yet, but uh, who's been a big part of planning out this course and, and all the work that's gone behind it. Uh, so Bob and I have been in pretty close touch with the OER University project. It's something that's sort of similar in spirit to what we're doing with this course. And as you can see, there's only one paragraph so, so far of actual prose about it. And then below that, we have a list of the founding university partners that are a part of this initiative. Uh, and then also, there are only, there are only three references. So uh, one thing that I, I think if, if anyone is looking to get started with, um, with making a more substantial contribution to Wikipedia, I think a, a, a great thing to try out would be just to go to maybe Google News or maybe your library's website. Uh, what any any way that you know to uh, to search for news articles and look for what kind of coverage OER University has gotten. Uh, there was a bit of uh, news coverage last November in early November 2013 uh, because that was the formal launch of this project. It's been developed gradually uh, over over the last few years, but there was a formal launch event that I was able to attend, um, and I know there were a few news articles that came out then. So if you can find an article and there's a bit of uh, description of, of what the project is about, you may be able to come up with a sentence you could add to that lead section and add a reference into this article. And that would be really good practice for how to, how to add a reference and, um, and how to start building an article that's in its early stages. So if anyone wants to give that a try, please uh, leave a note on the course talk page once you've done it, and that way everyone else in the class can take a look at it, and we might be able to uh, to all start to participate on this one. Hey, this Steve, is going to be... Uh, yes, hi, Bob. Hey, I just saw one thing that's not covered yet on this page is the idea that through OER University, uh, someone could potentially complete enough courses to earn a degree completely for free. So if someone wanted to research and include that part of the vision, that would be probably a good thing to add to the page. Excellent. Thanks, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, I think that's a, a, that would be a really good thing to get in here. And you know, another thing, too, if, you're, if this is something that you want to, want to try but you don't really have a clear idea, you might want to click on the talk page, too. So, you can, so Therese, who started the article, left a note when she did it, and I, I responded to her. So there's, there's not a whole lot of discussion here yet, but this is always a good practice when you're working on an article to, to take a look at that talk page and see what discussion there is, because it might prompt some, uh, it, it, it might help explain what you're seeing in the article already. Uh, it might, the, the person who's worked on the article might be, um, you know, some people are sort of more communicative about what they're doing than others, but sometimes you'll find that someone said, you know, I put in a whole bunch of information about the history of this thing, but I don't really know anything about 
um, you know, the, I don't know if it was, maybe if it was a software company. I don't really know much about the product line, so maybe someone else can, can come and help fill that in. So sometimes you'll see, you'll get sort of prompts from the talk page about things that other people think need to be added to the article. So uh, I'm going to pull up the article about MOOCs as well. So uh, you've probably heard the, the term MOOC, uh, Massive Open Online Course. Um, people ask whether this Writing Wikipedia articles class is a MOOC. Uh, I think, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think this is exactly massive. Uh, we're, our, our classes are getting bigger. You know, we're seeing more people show up sometimes. But, uh, but when people talk about a MOOC, in many cases, it's something that's sponsored by a major university. And, you know, they might have thousands of people participating. Um, and and dividing up into study groups and things like that. So I don't think what we're doing here is a is a MOOC, but it's certainly an open online course uh, in in every sense. And and there are other courses where people might question, well, is it really open? Um, you know, sometimes one of the issues with with MOOCs is that they kind of grew out of the open educational resources movement uh, with a very strong ethic that they should be very inclusive. Uh, that it should be possible for anyone to participate, and uh, so sometimes you'll you'll find that there are uh, things that are that are called MOOCs where maybe it's only uh, maybe the the what's offered to a student at the university is more than what's available to the general public. So it might not be open in that respect, or it might um, not be run in a way that has free licensing around the resources that you're using in the class or that you're producing. They might be all protected by copyright and usable within the course, but you might not have the ability to go and adapt that course and operate yourself in a, you know, in a modified version because you don't have um, copyright or the, you don't have a license to use the materials. So there's a lot of debate around, uh, around the open aspect of MOOCs. And so this article, this is something that's really been uh, very much in the news the last few years. It's very anyone who's interested in education uh, is interested in this development. So this Wikipedia article gets a ton of traffic. Um, I think I showed you briefly last week how to see what the readership of an article is. I'm going to just briefly review that. If we click on the view history link on the article, uh, and then Near the top, there's a line with several external links, and it ends with page view statistics. So I'm going to click that. And this takes us to an article, a page that's not actually on Wikipedia, but it's, it's a Wikipedia-oriented tool. And this page, well, it looks, it's not displaying very well in the Blackboard Collaborate browser, but we do get the overall number at the top of it. And if you open this in your browser, you're going to see an actual chart. Uh, of what the daily readership is over the last 30 days. But we can see the total amount in the last 30 days, which is 76,000. So 76,000 people have looked at this, this page, which is a very high number. So of all, the, of all the Wikipedia articles we look at in this class, this is probably uh, by far the most widely read. So you can imagine if, if, uh, if, if one of the things we're trying to do here is, is improve the understanding of open educational resources, this would be a great page for us to improve over the course of this course. So um, when we next week introduce the, the concept of the final project for the course, uh, this is something I really I would I would hope that one or more students would take this on and maybe form a team. Maybe maybe several people want to work on this article and carry it forward uh, and make some improvements to it. But it's going to be a very different kind of project than the one we just looked at. The OER University article, if you work on that, you're probably going to find that you're more or less the only person. So Therese is working on that. I'm sure she would be delighted to have a few other people working beside her. Uh, but with this article, let's just, uh, oops, I just clicked away from the page I wanted to go to, the history page. You can see just today there have been three edits to it. Um, and in the last few weeks, there have been 20 or 30 edits to it. And if we look at the article's talk page, if you click talk, You'll see there's a fair amount of discussion. There's, there are lots and lots of topics here. So um, 
if you're going to work on an article like this, you'd probably want to go to the talk page and scroll to the bottom and see what some of the things people have been talking about recently are. Um, and you'd probably want to look through some of those recent edits that they've made to the article itself, too, and, and look at specifically what those changes were to get a sense of, uh, of, of kind of what, what issues other people are seeing with the article. You're probably going to find that people are going to an article like this, some of them with, with very different goals for the article. Um, people have different ideas of what a MOOC is, and so they might be expecting the article um, to, to, ref to reflect different things. And actually, the second to last section, if, so I've still got the talk page open. Please uh, scroll to the very bottom of this page. And you'll see the, the second to last section says, way too much soapboxing and pushing the advantage of CMOOCs. So CMOOC is sort of is one way of looking at MOOCs, uh, as you can read about in the article. And without getting into the details of this disagreement, the first comment says that the, the point of this article should be to convey a certain kind of information. And so this is a criticism of the article that it should, that it should emphasize things differently. But the response says, I, on the other hand, want to see and learn every aspect. So right there, we have a disagreement about what ought to be in the article. Um, uh, okay, so Sarah is saying it's, uh, Sarah, yes, please, uh, why don't you take over the screen? Um, so I think my... I will do that, and I uh, just let me know what you'd like me to do with it. Okay. Well, I think we're, that's actually pretty much what I wanted to do in terms of introducing these articles. So um, maybe we can peruse your calendar for a moment and make sure that you're uh, why don't we make sure that I'm on time? <laughs> That's a great that. idea. Let's look at my calendar. <laughs> and um, so I, I know I've gotten quite behind here, um, but let's. There's there's an exercise that I'd really like to uh, to to pause and have everybody do here. Um, one thing that we haven't really gotten into too much is the course talk page. We've had a few comments there, but this really should be, this is, this is a big part of our home. This is a place for us to interact and ask questions and share what we're doing. Um, so does everybody know where the course top page lives? It's, if you're looking at any page within our, our, our course home page or the week one or the week two page, you can always get to our course talk page just by clicking the talk tab in the upper left or uh, in the, the banner at the top. There's a, like on the right hand side, it says talk page WT colon open. So you can click on that, or you can just type that in, WT open in the, uh, in the search bar. So any of those is going to take you to this, this page. The actual title of it, you can see, is Wikipedia Talk Wiki Project Open. So again, this is a, a page that we share with, uh, it's, it's not exclusive to our course, although you'll find that, that we're probably using it more than other folks. Uh, but Wiki Project Open is a place for Wikipedians in general who have an interest in open education and related topics to discuss how to improve those Wikipedia articles. So uh, I see you hovering over the, the main page of Wiki Project Open. Let's not go there just now. Uh, but if, if students want to take a look at that on your own time, that would be that would be great. And maybe we can revisit it in a later class session. But uh, the, the main thing I want to do is I'd, I'd like everyone to leave a uh, to leave a, a brief comment uh, on this page. So the the way you would do that is is to, okay. So when, so Sarah, you're Sarah's scrolling down, and we should take a look at what the recent comments are. Generally, the most recent comments are going to be at the bottom of the page. So the refresh is taking a little while on my screen and probably on yours. Should be but we should be at the bottom now. And you can see these last couple, uh, these last few comments are all relevant to our course. Uh, and this is, so this is, this is, this is a place for you as you're, as you're working on your homework, as you're working on an article, you should feel free to leave a note here uh, with a question or with a link to the article that you're working on to show it off to your classmates. Um, to request help from your classmates, things like that. And uh, I think it would be great if, uh, 
if everybody leaves a very quick comment here, just say hi, uh, you know, and and sign it. Uh, if you don't remember how to do the signature, it's four tildes. That's the squiggly mark that's probably uh, just to the left of the one key on your keyboard. So at the end of your comment, just put four of those, and it'll turn into your name and a timestamp. So the way that you're going to do this is by clicking on the new section button at the top, and uh, and then entering your comment. And we're going to we're going to find that we're going to have a little bit of trouble here, and I want to walk you through what that looks like. So I think it's going to probably we're going to probably find this out on Sarah's screen when she click Save. OK, go ahead. Oh, okay. Success. So she was successful. But um, so ev everyone on the call, please do this alongside us. And um, Sarah, why don't you, well, here, I'll, yeah, Sarah, why don't you leave another comment? And I'm actually going to do this on my, I'm going to do this exercise along with you guys. Okay. So hang on, okay. We just don't have enough oh, people you know, leaving okay. comments at the same time. I, I'm going to say okay. that. Sorry, go ahead, Pete. I, I, I just I just realized what's uh, what's happening. That's so why this experiment is not working the way I I wanted it to. So this is good. I'm glad to see uh, people leaving comments. But uh, Sarah, let's we need to be in the same section to have an edit conflict. So um, yeah, why don't you just pause in that? Like you can enter some text, but don't hit save yet. Are you saying everyone should edit my one called uh, Sarah leaves a new comment? No, why don't you just edit this section? Um, I just did. Yep, yeah, and but don't don't hit save just yet. Okay. Um, so click save now. Okay. So what? Ha so we see a big, a whole, <laughs> a whole pile of text, and the heading says "Edit Conflict." So what happened here is I left a, a comment in that section at the same time as Sarah did. We were both editing at the same time, and so the Wikipedia software saw that and it didn't know what to do about it. It didn't know if my comment, if 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 my addition to that section was supposed to override Sarah's, or whether hers was supposed to override mine, or whether it was supposed to do a combination and include both what I said and what she said. Um, so it's throwing this back at Sarah. I had already saved mine. mine mine's already saved in the, sec in the section, but she clicked Save after I did. So it doesn't know what to do with her edit. So if you scroll down in this, can you scroll down about one screen, Sarah? So we're going to see two windows that look like the edit window. And the, the first one is going to contain what was there, what, what was saved there by me, what was saved there before her edit, was, before it tried to save her edit. And the second one, I hope I'm not getting the order wrong here. If you, so if you continue to scroll down in the, the, the main, in the entire window, No. No, the other scroll bar to the right. Yeah, so scroll down about another screen. Okay, so it's going to show us the differences between my version and her version. And then we're just count coming up on the section that says your text. So usually when, when this comes up, or often when this comes up, It'll be because you did a really long edit. You clicked edit, and then maybe you took 10 minutes while you were 
uh, you know, you were looking at the source you were quoting and you were rephrasing and, and you know, mixing things around in the edit window. And then you finally get around to clicking save, but someone else has done something in the meantime. So your first instinct might be panic. You might think like, whoa, I just put all that work in. Uh, you know, maybe it's not 10 minutes, maybe it's an hour. You know, sometimes you kind of get really into working on a Wikipedia article and you might do a whole lot without, without saving. So don't panic when this happens because that your text window is always going to be there. So before you navigate away from this page, scroll down far enough to find that and you can copy it out. You might want to copy it out and put it into a word processor or a text editor or something like that while you figure out what to do. But just Keep in mind, it's not done completely. This, the, the Wikipedia software will uh, will preserve it for that window. But if you do, if you click close on this, if you if you get frustrated and, and close the window, then you really are sunk, and it is going to be hard to get it back. So, can I throw uh, out a second warning there? Something I've I think something I've recently done to myself. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me all right? Oh, so many tabs open, yes. I just wasn't prepared. I'm a user who opens a lot of tabs, as you might have noticed. And I managed to create an edit conflict between two of my own tabs, <clears throat> except that it was me logged in as me both times. So when I went ahead and saved my work in one tab, I overrode I, I would, my work I would call you an overachiever. Tab. You were trying to create the And everything was reverted to about 30 minutes earlier. And I, I had a big panic, and then of course I, I realized that anyone anyone who wants to can undo a change by going into the history. <clears throat> which I'll do now. I'm just going to leave this page and not worry about the edit conflict, which I would not do if, if there were actually anything at stake. And um, look at look at the last change, and I, I could just be nasty and undo someone else's <laughs> comment. Um, but in that in that case, I just went ahead and undid my own save, and it rolled back. It it roll it re-rolled back all of the changes that I I had lost. So I was then able to save in another tab. So just you know, saving often has has a lot of merits. One is much less likely to have conflicts. Another is building your own user um, history, building your your own um, sort of reputation as an editor, and being able to break everything down into increments. It's all very useful. Okay. So, yes, we're at we've hit the hour mark. What, what would you like? We're at the to hour mark, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is just I'm going to mention the the last two items on here that I was going to cover. I'm just going to give you links to them, and uh, the, so we've got an activity, and we've got um, well, we've got a couple of links in an activity, and I'm just going to mention what those are, and uh, then we'll take a break and I'll let you uh, take on the activity, and then we can come back and talk about it uh, in the lab portion of the class. So the two links that I want to give you, <clears throat> so we've, we've talked, I've, I've talked with, with all the articles that I've shown you about the concept of what constitutes quality on Wikipedia, and I want to, I kind of want to give you a little bit better an idea of the, the context for that. So there are, some peer review processes on Wikipedia where you can submit your, usually people submit their own work um, and they say, I want, I, I think that this is up to uh, a certain quality level and I'd like someone else to review it. So the featured article criteria are a really good place to start at getting a, a, a grasp of what is considered the very highest quality in a Wikipedia article. So uh, let's, I'm going to put these links in the etherpad. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I'm scrolling to where people are, okay, so I've got the, the link section. So someone just typed in featured article criteria, thank you. Um, so I'm going to put in two links. So the first one is, um, is, is to the main page about featured articles. So that will show you um, that will give you some context for what a featured article is, and it also give you a list of all the, uh, I think it's about 5,000 
articles that have made it to this status before. So you can browse through those and get a really high quality tour of Wikipedia. And then the criteria themselves are uh, the same thing with a question mark at the end as part of the URL. Um, or I think FAC is another shortcut to the same thing. Um, maybe someone can double check that link and make sure I really got it right. And then the other thing I that you should take a look at is the manual of style. So this is the uh, this is this is basically the the guide for um, when there are questions about like should something be capitalized or uh, you know where do we hyphenate? How do we deal with uh, with words in foreign languages? Um, questions like that. There's really there's a very extensive manual of style that's specific to Wikipedia. It's um it's based on if if people are familiar with um with like the Chicago style manual or the Associated Press manual of style, um, the Wikipedia manual of style draws very heavily on those, um, but it really is its own thing. So uh, you might find that there are ways you probably have noticed that there are ways that Wikipedia does things that aren't quite how you'd expect it, and um, you know, you might or might not agree with it, but at least here you can see <laughs> what the uh, what the consensus has been. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to you to uh, to take a look at those during the rest of the class session, along with uh, any of the homework that you take on today. Um, but the uh, the activity that I'd like you to start off with when we come back from our break is. Uh, is adding a an image and or a user box um, to your user page. So it's actually so an image like if you want to upload a photo of yourself, um, or if there's just an uh, uh, like a picture of a you know a flower or an animal or something like that that you'd like on your user page, um, or a a user box like we saw on I think it was Maynard's uh, user page, or uh, there's the um, the Wikipedia Signator uh, Service Award. So uh, we'll put in some uh, some. I'll, I'm going to put in some links when I stop talking here in the Etherpad that'll get you started on any one of those. And why don't you give it a try yourself? And then if you have questions, uh, we'll come back and pick that up in the lab session. So we'll let's let, let's see. Right now it's six minutes past the hour. So let's start the lab session at 25 after. So we'll have about 20 minutes off. So thanks everybody for coming and good luck with the homework. And uh, I'll see you during the rest of the session and then again next week. Okay, welcome every everybody back from break. Or actually welcome me back from break. I see you guys have all been chatting up a storm, which is great to see. So uh, I'm wondering whether I think people have been working on articles as well as user pages, which is excellent. Um, I'm wondering uh, I'm, I'm wondering if people were able to add something fun to their user page. Um, is there anyone who did have a chance to add a, an image or a okay two bulldogs that's excellent. So let's um, if if anyone wants to take the microphone, please feel free to do so. Maybe just say so in the in the chat window and uh, and you can tell us a little bit about what you added. Or if not, I'll just pull up your user pages and we can take a look at them. So let's see. I I think my yeah, I'm still for some reason not able to share my web browser, but I'm gonna go back to the in between mode. Or Sarah, do you wanna do you wanna do yeah, this? I'm, I'm happy to share. I just can't. Okay. Uh, I only have one monitor, so I'm not able to watch. I'm not really able to watch chat at the same time. So. Okay. Well, while you're sharing, I'll I'll do that. 
Okay, where would you like me to go, Pete? Um, so, so why don't we look at Two Bulldogs page and Glenn's page and Maynard's page? And anyone who's in the in the chat window. So, Two Bulldogs was the first to say yes. They added something. So I would just go to the course homepage and look for the username. Yep, I'm just trying to hide the billions of other tabs I've got going first this time, yep. including my personal calendar. So, oh, okay. So you've got. I'm on the course description page, so I'm going to go into our actual course content page. I'm going to scroll down. Who would you like me to pull up first? So, two bulldogs. I think. Two, I assume that's the username that you. Um. That that that's yeah. Okay. Your Wikipedia username. Great. So, just getting ready to add a, a reference. Okay. Um. So, what did? Oh, so your name is Lisa. Excellent. Hi, Lisa. Um. So Sarah, maybe you can click on the view history, and that way we can all see what was just added here. So we can see you you added you started it last week with the February 25th date. And Sarah, if you click on compare selected revisions, we'll see the comparison between these two edits. Okay, great. So most of this page you just added just now. Wonderful. And I can see you you figured out how to add sections, and you put in some links. So you're definitely picking up some of the formatting that we've been covering in here. Very good. Um, any? Do you have any questions before we move on? Looks like you're off to a great start. So Sarah, why don't you why don't you go back and let's look at. Um, Oh, I don't think you're a slow learner at all. This is exactly the kind of pace I would expect to see. So this is great. Um, so Glenn said that he just added some boxes. So why don't we look at Glenn's page? Glenn, who was in our class last time around. Yes, a repeat student, which we're always very happy to see. However, I can't pull him up under Glenn because he's under G. Third time, yes, it is your third time. I N G, is that correct? Yep, getting exactly. Yep. Okay, so we've got two user boxes. Excellent, as Canadian as possible. <laughs> under the circumstances. Yeah. So, um, so let's let's take a look at the. Can you click the edit button? So I anyone who hasn't know that I got that joke. Um, so anyone who hasn't tried adding a user box, let's uh, let's be sure to look at what the code looks like for that. So the very two last the last two lines here are in, enclosed not in square brackets like we've seen for ordinary links on Wikipedia, but in Two squiggly brackets on either side. I don't know if there's, is there a formal name for that or is squiggly brackets. I'm going to go with squiggly brackets. Um, Pretty close, I believe. So, so the the difference between the square brackets and the squiggly brackets, when you when you put something between squiggly brackets like that, it pulls in the content of that page, or which is usually what's called a template on Wikipedia, and it actually pulls it into the page. So. All of the code that creates these user boxes lives on its own Wikipedia page, and um, and by putting it in in this format, it actually it, it pulls all that code into your page. So, yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks Maynard for clarifying that. Oh, braces—that's the word I was looking for. Um, so. One of the ways that people will add user boxes to their page is they'll find it on someone else's page. And even if you don't really know a whole lot about Wikipedia coding, you can just copy and paste what you see and put it on your own page. 
So, um, Glenn, I don't know if that's the if if you maybe maybe you can mention in the chat window where you found these to put them in. Oh, Sarah, can you um can you increase the uh, I think Control Plus will in increase the point the font size in your browser. Yeah, that should be a little easier for everyone to read. Okay, so Glenn found those on the user box page, so I guess the, that's the, the link that I put in the Etherpad. So uh, many user boxes will be listed on that page, but also people will just create their own. So uh, sometimes you'll, if you're, if you're looking at other people's user pages, you might run into one that you don't see on the user box page. So, and if, uh, actually, if anyone is, um, you know, if we have any of the more experienced Wikipedians that we have here, if someone has figured out how to build templates, you might try your hand at creating a user box for the Wikisue course. That might be a, a fun exercise, and then that's something that we could all put on our user pages. Um, there were students in Wikisue. Um, so anyone else want to show theirs? Oh, I see Maynard, uh, you added something to yours as well. And I think I saw in the chat you've got 4,000 edits. I didn't realize. So uh, <laughs> you're perhaps the most experienced Wikipedian we've had in the course. I hope this is. Uh, I hope we're able to show you some things that you hadn't learned before. So let's, Sarah, can you click on view history so we can see what the most recent additions are here? Uh, and no, Sarah, I'm not hearing you. Could you unclick the talk button by chance? What time period would you like me to look at? I have not figured out the columns. Can uh, you the hear col me? Oh, the columns. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So is there, is, Maynard? Is there a specific edit here that we should look at for? Oh, I see. You're putting in lots of uh, lots of line breaks. So you're trying to get, I, I, I think I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to get um, the user boxes to appear one above the other instead of side by side. Um, I'd like to, them to appear neatly on the page. However, I can do that. OK. So let's go back. Let's, let's, can you pull up the page again, Sarah, so we can see how they're displaying? And this is a tricky area, um, getting user boxes to display in the in the way that you want to. Um, it's it can be a little tricky. Okay, so it looks like they're they're showing. So they actually look pretty. Is it these four that you're talking about, Maynard? We've got two by two. Well, there are six. There should be five oh, okay. up there, and there's one down at the bottom. Then I have the Yeoman editor below. OK. And then there's another kind of editor, and I qualify for that, so I try to include both of those. Uh-huh. OK. Yeah, so, well, there's, there's um, I wouldn't say there's really any incorrect way to do this stuff, but, but there's, you know, I can, I can definitely relate to a, a desire to, you know, have them appear in a way that uh, that is visually appealing. Uh, and it can be frustrating with these because they're, the, the code involved can be a little tricky. Um, one, uh, let, me, let me just give you one little trick, which is there's a template called clear. So the code you would put in is, uh, I'm just putting it in the chat window. I actually probably should be putting it in the, Etherpad.
Okay, I see someone is a step ahead of me. That's great. Um, so when you put in clear uh, in in between double braces, that and this is something that's useful to put in after an image or a table or a user box, that will essentially force a line break. So an example of where I would use clear is um, if you're in an article and you you have a very short section, it's just one or two sentences, and, um, and maybe you have a picture in that section and you want the next section that's below it to leave some white space below the text so that it's all, so the whole section all starts at once instead of wrapping around the, the picture. Um, if you put the clear code below the picture, that's exactly what it tells it to do. Everything below that starts on a new line. So uh, that's maybe maybe that's maybe a useful piece uh, for you, Maynard. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I don't really have a very clear idea in mind of how you would most like this to to appear, so that might be the best I can do at the moment. Uh, but I think why don't, why don't you see if that helps you out, and if you are still having trouble with that, why don't you leave a note on the talk page, and uh, and I'll see if I can come back with something more. Okay. So anyone else? Uh, anyone else for the user page you'd, you'd like us to look at? I also saw there was some work. On the um, on the OER University page article uh, during the break, so we could look at that as well. So John, I see. So you're just looking up how to add a user page or a, an image to your user page. Um, let, let me actually so. I'm sorry. Before we come to OER University, let me let me just stay on the user page uh, topic for a moment, because uh, I'd like to I'd like to I'd like to give you a, a basic idea of how you would number one search for an image that you might want to put on your page, uh, and number two how you might upload a, a picture to put on your page. So um, let's go to Wiki, Wikimedia Commons. So Wikimedia Commons, I, I don't think I've actually mentioned before. I usually try to get to this in the first session. Wikimedia Commons is a separate site from Wikipedia, but it's it's still part of the Wikimedia universe. It's still part of the um, the same community, the same project. So Sarah just did a Google search, which is a great way to find it. The address is commons.wikimedia.org. And as you can see, it um, it has a very similar look to Wikipedia. It uses the same software, but you've got a different logo in the upper left. And this is a, a media repository. So Commons exists purely to host images and uh, occasionally uh, audio files and video files that are made available to Wikipedia and to other wiki projects. So the reason it came into existence was like if you had an article about, say, uh, I don't know, George Washington in the English Wikipedia, and then someone started an article about George Washington in the French Wikipedia. Why should they have to upload the image separately uh, to that to a you know to a different site? Why why can't they just use the same image? So um, the community cre created this separate site to address that need that has a, a special link to all the Wikipedias. So if you're specific if what you're specifically looking to do is to search for images, you probably want to go to Commons. And let's um, Sarah, why don't you type in like uh, I don't know orchid. Like let's say you wanted a nice maybe you you uh, you like orchids and you'd, you'd like to have a nice picture of a flower on your user page. So. If you type in a search here, unlike Wikipedia, it's going to immediately start pulling up uh, image files. And if you click on any one of them, uh, just you know, just pick one out, it's going to take you to a page that uh, it gives you some more. It gives you a bigger version of the photo and also some information about it. So what's, sometimes there'll be an extensive description here. It's just one word, but usually that'll be. Um, you know, ideally, that should tell you a little bit more about what you're looking at. 
uh, you'll be able to look at it in different sizes. So especially if it was uploaded in high resolution, you can click on whatever version you want. This is especially useful, like say if you wanted to use that image um, in a print publication or something like that, and you really you really need a high resolution version of it, you would want to download the highest quality version. Um, but for our purposes here, the main thing is just to get the exact title of the file. So if you scroll back up to the, the top, what I would do is just, just drag across where it says file orchids.jpg uh, and include the, include the word file in the selection. Copy the, that whole thing. So then just copy that and we're going to paste it on the user, on the Wikipedia user page. So let's go back to Wikipedia and go back to your user page. So now if you click, uh, yeah, why don't you go down, why don't you click one of the sections? So you can click edit in, yeah, in a section. So this is something that doesn't already have uh, an image in it. Perfect. And then put the cursor where you want to put the image. And typically an image will go on the right-hand side and it'll go, if you put the code above a bit of text, it'll go to the right of that text. So if we wanted to go to the right of the bullet points, we actually want to put in the code um, just above them. And, and now uh, there's a, in the, the toolbar, there's uh, next to the link, there's an icon that sort of shows a photograph. So this is the easiest way to put a file in. So if you click on that, you can paste in that file name that you just copied. Um, I'm actually not a hundred, maybe we don't want the word file in there. Yeah, I think Sarah was remembering it right and I was, yeah, for this, for entering it this way, you actually don't want to put in the word file. And then she just typed in a nice caption. And you can make some choices about whether you want it on the left or the right. Typically, you're going to want thumbnail. And then click Insert. And you'll see that this puts in some wiki code. You see it put it between double brackets. It put in the word file there. Uh, and various bits of code that will make it appear a certain way. And now if you scroll down and you do show preview, we can see what that would look like. Yep. So in, instead of clicking save page, she's going to click show preview because we don't need her to change her user page just to suit my whims. This is just an example. But this is how it's going to show up. So, oh, I see, a, I see a question going by in the chat window. Uh, Fee just asked, Sarah used the word pretty. Is it okay to use more fluffy language? So um, this, is, uh, this is really a, a, a great example of, of the difference between working on your own user page versus working on an article. So definitely, if you were working in an article, um, you probably wouldn't even want to say something as subjected, subjective as this is a pretty flower, um, you know, because it's, that's, that's not really um, a neutral way of putting it. Uh, but you definitely wouldn't want to use colloquial language. But if it's on your own user page, you can kind of do whatever you want. So, um, yeah, so, so for, for, for something like this, you should really be, you know, you should feel free to express yourself however you want to. So I think that that will give you an idea how to add an, an image that already exists on Commons. But let's say you want to upload a photo of yourself. <laughs> and I see Sarah's typing into her <laughs> into her user page here. She's jumping into our discussion. Um, so let's let's look at how you to upload an image. So if you go back to, let, let, I think there's actually, I think if you click, 
I'm trying to remember. If you click on that photo, does it give you an option to go directly to comments from there, or do you have to you have to type it in? As you'll probably learn throughout this class, I am chronically a little bit behind on um, how the technology is evolving because there are always sort of new and better tools for editing Wikipedia, and sometimes I forget what has been. Are you able to hear me now? Um, okay, I've been having some uh, difficulty with the notification yes. light on my microphone that tells me when I'm muted, so I was muted before, but I was unaware of it. That's why I've been so quiet. Anyway, now I know I can speak, so that's good. Carry on. Okay, welcome back. Um, Okay, so which which page are you on now? You're yeah, I went ahead and I clicked okay, on the so file, you're looking and at the, it, it took me directly to... Page. Well, actually, I was about to say it took me to Wikimedia yeah. Commons, but actually it didn't, although I am getting all of the Commons information about the file. Yeah. Yes. So this is uh, this is a, this is a useful thing to to look at too. So every w when you're looking at a Wikipedia page article um, and you click on an image, it will typically take you to a page like this that's still on Wikipedia. But this part that's right in the middle of the screen right now, uh, you notice that bar that says this is a file from the Wikimedia Commons information from its description page there is shown below. So it's it's pulling all the information from Commons as though it was a Wikipedia page. And if you want to go directly to its page on Commons, you want to click that link that says description page there. And that will take you to a page that looks almost exactly like this, but it has the Wikimedia Commons logo in the upper left instead of the Wikipedia logo. So why don't you, why don't you do that? Click on that. This is going to take us back to Commons. Uh, another thing about the way that these sites are tied together is that you'll notice that she's still logged in, which you can tell because it, it has her username in the upper, sort of the, the center of the page. So it's smart enough to recognize that because she was logged in on Wikipedia, it, it keeps her logged in when she goes to Wikimedia Commons with the same account name. And that was not always the case, right? Uh, there was the introduction of sort of unified accounts across multiple Wikimedia sites not not so long ago. Yeah. So people who set up accounts a long time ago might have not known that this was a shift. Which is, it's quite nice actually. Although you you it still knows you it still knows that you're the same user, but when I am on the Commons page, I have a different user page. It's a separate page I had to set up here. Right. It does not pull your user page. So the user page that you've created on Wikipedia the page itself does not come across. Like it'll remember that you're still logged in, but it doesn't copy your user page over. So some people, most most people, if if you're primarily interested in Wikipedia and you just occasionally log into Commons to upload a photo, you might want to explicitly put a link to your Wikipedia user page on your Commons user page, um, and that will just suggest to people that they go and visit you on Wikipedia. There are people who are much more interested in curating images on Commons. Like if you're a photographer or um, just really interested in uh, you know, medieval art or something like that, you, must, you might be much more interested in that than in Wikipedia. So you don't always know when you're looking at someone's user page whether, uh, whether you're sort of at their home wiki or not. And so some people will, do, will Put something explicit. They'll say like, "Hi, I, you know, I'm on Commons occasionally, but here's my Wikipedia user page. That's where you'll usually find me." And when people are wondering how to navigate this stuff, it's a great idea to just look at how Pete has handled his multiple accounts for a sense, <laughs> for a sense of how to like, pull it all together, because that's typically what I do. Which, which can be, which is true, but it's not necessarily the only way. So in my case, I've created separate user pages on Commons and on Wikipedia because I'm fairly active on both of them. Uh, so I sort of talk about different stuff about what I'm interested in on both of them. Um, so that's like if if you're if you're pretty active and you're logging into both of them on a regular basis, that's a good way to go about it. Um, I, part of the reason I bring up the point is because for people who are truly brand new to editing Wikipedia, um, it can be very daunting to figure out how to do things, and just aping how other people have done things is just absolutely critical to moving forward. You know, just going into pages that have just look at something and say, "Gosh, how, do, how on earth did he do that?" 
you can just copy and paste almost anything. I mean, you know, sometimes you might need permission, but mm -hmm. to, to, it's not just things like the user boxes that are set up in the pre-existing templates. There are really all kinds of tricks you can pick up just by looking at the code on other users' pages and articles. So just a general point. Great. So I'm seeing some excellent questions go by in the chat window. So uh, let's see, Chris. I want to I want to start with yours. I see Fis, uh, Fee, you have one as well. So I'll, I'll get to you next. Um, so Chris asks, how does Commons stop people from using it as a picture hosting service? Um, and this is really this. I I, I love the way you put the question um, because it really it really highlights exactly what the what the issue is there. In a certain sense, we want people to use it as a picture hosting service. If those pictures are freely licensed, if those pictures are, you know, if they're if if they're truly free of copyright restrictions that would um, otherwise be an impediment, and if they could be useful for some kind of educational purpose, then we want them to upload them to Commons. It doesn't really hurt if if there are like five thousand pictures of a dandelion, uh, it doesn't hurt anyone. And every the the different language versions of Wikipedia that have articles on dandelions, different different language versions might choose a different image. And it's to and if someone is doing a research paper about dandelions, they might find the page on Commons and find that there's an image there that's useful specifically to them that they can reuse in their in some report that they're writing or something. Um, even though it's not useful for a Wikipedia article. So that's really part of the, the, the mission and the purpose of Commons is to support reuse like that. Um, but there are definitely cases where someone uploads a completely useless file. It happens, it, it really happens all the time. And those do get deleted. There are some standards around that. I, I don't want to go too far down this path because really this is a class about Wikipedia. And this is one of those cases where we could have a whole separate class about Wikimedia Commons. Uh, but the basic idea is that an image needs to be useful for an educational purpose, um, and it needs to be uh, free of copyright restrictions, that uh, it, it, it needs to carry a free license or be in the public domain. And there are people on Commons just like there are people on Wikipedia who are continually going through and looking at things and making decisions about whether to keep the stuff that's been uploaded. Um, and see, your question was, I may have missed this. Do you have to upload an image, or can you not embed one from Flickr? So it's another great question. I'm glad you asked it. That's something I, I meant to cover. Um, so Wikipedia is set up to only be able to pull in media files from Commons, or or from it. There there's some sort of unusual cases where you might upload it directly to Wikipedia instead of Commons. Uh, this is, uh, the, I, I think the main reason for this, well, I think there, there are kind of two reasons. One, uh, one reason is, uh, is that when, when you let people embed information from other websites, it creates a security hole. It, would be, it, it makes it possible for, you know, when you have an, a site that's open for anyone to edit it, um, there might be clever ways to make something seem like it's a JPEG image, but actually it has a bit of code in it that installs a virus on your computer and does all kinds of nasty things. So it's sort of a basic bit of protection for a really widely editable site like Wikipedia to just say, no, we don't do that. We, you know, we're going to, we're going to be a little more controlled about what it's possible to include. And, uh, and the other reason is that, um, Wikipedia is uh, is is philosophically very committed to presenting information that can be reused by anyone. So not only can you read the art, the encyclopedia for free, but you can also reuse the text and you can reuse the images uh, and all of that. And so um, making it uh, making it, if it were possible to embed images from Flickr, it would be very easy to embed stuff that is not actually free for other people to reuse. And so it's it's easier to control those standards by um, requiring people to upload to Commons. 
So if if something is available under a free license, like Flickr is actually is like an, there there are several websites like this. Um, when you upload a file to Flickr, you can actually choose a Creative Commons license. So you can choose to say, I, I want anyone in the world to be able to reuse this file as long as they give me credit for it. So um, if if a file has been marked as such on Flickr and you find it there, there's actually uh, oh, okay. So I see Sarah has pulled up the upload the, the upload wizard, and um, there are actually easy ways to pull it in um, to Wikimedia Commons. Actually, I think this is something that uh, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna not go into the detail of how to pull in an image from Flickr right now. If that's something that you're particularly interested in, why don't you leave a note on the, the talk page and we can come back to that offline. Because um, I want to get back to how you can upload a picture of yourself, which is a little easier. Um, so OK, so Sarah has gone back to Commons. I think your microphone might be off again, Sarah, or, you, or maybe you just aren't, um, aren't saying anything. Um, Yes, so, it, was, it was off. I hear that. Okay, what, can you can you back up a screen so that we can see how we got to the upload wizard? I, or, I always oh, use personally. I always use Google because for me it's the fastest. I always just type Wikimedia or Wikipedia and whatever it is I need, and it's always in the top few links. I know that's not the official Wikipedia way to do it, so I will go back to Wikipedia and show people the real way. Okay. Um. So. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I think you need to do, and this is actually not the process I usually follow, so um, so I might be wrong. <laughs> uh, so scroll down. No, we're not going to use the search window. Just uh, just scroll down a little, and on the left hand side, I believe you're going to see a link that says upload file. Yes. What, what anyone watching is seeing is the fact that there are m multiple ways to do all of this, and we all kind of have our own method. Yeah. Do you want me to click here? So um, let's pause and oh okay. So so pause on this page. And this actually so this so because we were on Wikipedia, what this would do by default is upload it directly to Wikipedia. And that's actually not what we want to do. So underneath that big click here to start the upload form, you'll see uh, Commons wizard recommended for free files. So that's what you want to click, and that's going to take you to the Wikimedia Commons upload page. And here, this is actually going to be refreshingly uh, sort of easy and modern compared to a lot of the stuff on Wikipedia. You get nice big buttons and fields to fill in, and it'll guide you through the process of uploading a file. So yeah, you click up upload your file. Do you have a uh, do you have something obvious we can? Am I going to follow through, or am I just going sure, to? Sure. Yeah, please do. Because we can go pretty far through this without actually uploading it. Um, there's probably like if you just go to your pictures folder, there's probably like some sample stuff. I have uh, a lot of photos lying around. Not that I would actually mind uploading anymore, but I think on the fly I will grab something random off my desktop. Or not. One moment. Excellent. All, All right. right, it's me on the beach. Great. So uh as you saw there there was uh there was a moment where the the big green check mark was sort of a it was a spinning icon for a moment. So it actually has already like behind the scenes, it's already uploaded this. It hasn't made it public anywhere, but um but it's now sort of in the in the it's 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 in a in like a box of stuff we're doing to upload the file. So if we wanted, we could now click the the add more files button and you could upload several things and then process them all together. But let's skip that for now and just click continue. 
So on this page, it asks you to. This is where it asks you to address the copyright issue. So it it starts off by asking you, is this some is this a photo that you took, or is this not your own work? In a picture of yourself, this is actually this this is actually kind of a, a weird um, and and kind of sometimes kind of frustrating area. If if a friend took a photo of a file. Technically, what you need if if a friend took a photo of you, technically what you need to do is get them to explicitly say that they release it under a free license before you have the right to upload it to Wikimedia Commons. And unlike some social media sites like Flickr or Facebook, Wikimedia Commons actually has a community that that will tend to look at those things and object if it wasn't done right. So, if you have a, a nice photo that a friend took. It's probably worthwhile to either get them to take it or to have them uh, like send you an email explicitly saying that they release it under a Creative Commons license. I'm going to not go into those details right now, but I think uh, this would be good. If someone's interested in this, please do ask a question on the talk page, and I will um, I'll put some links in after the, the class on the talk page so we can refer back to it. And we, Peter, I don't know if you saw it, but when I was glancing back at the chat box, I did see someone talking about uh, having been in that situation and having their own photo removed. So okay. Oh, okay. Questions about that. Yeah. So um, no, I took this one. So okay. So yeah, if you took it yourself, that's fine. And it's and you know especially you know people people might actually look at it and sort of analyze like oh well that would have had to be taken with the timer and I mean it's you know maybe not for for most user pick. But uh, if if something is being used to illustrate an article and it just doesn't really look credible, that um, if it's sort of obvious that you're sitting at a table uh, at a restaurant with a bunch of people and that it was probably the waiter that took it, there are actually people who will bring that up and say, "Hey, we we don't have the right copyright information for this." So uh, so definitely pay attention to this stuff and and try to get it right. Um, if it's not your, own, can you click on the "This file is not my own work" button because it's actually not as much of a dead end as you might think. If you put the source um, of the, it, like if this was a file from Flickr and it's marked as being Creative Commons licensed, or if it's from, say, like the Library of Congress and it explicitly says that it's in the public domain, that's fine. You can upload it here. So you would put, like for source, you would put a link to where you found it on the web. And uh, you need to put something in the author section if it's unknown. Like sometimes with an old photograph, it's not known. But if it's if it was published before 1923, it's going to be in the public domain anyway. So um, so you would just put in the word unknown. And then after that, you need to choose one of these options of why you why you think it's okay. So any one of these that you click will give you some further buttons to click. The last one says I found it on the internet. I'm not sure, so that's uh, that's there because a lot of people will try to upload stuff for exactly that reason, and that's going to basically tell them this is no no good. Like you you need to you need to do better than that if you expect it to stay. So um, something they do not say is say if say that a friend of mine had taken that photo on the beach. It does not uh, that is not one of the options. I cannot say, oh, someone I know took it and said I could use it. Right. It's not allowed. That person would actually have to publish it with the correct license first. Right. So there is there is a way to get around that uh, that involves sending an email to document that that person has really released it that way. But that's sort of too complex of a process for this upload form. So it's not directly presented as an option. Uh, but anyway, we're we're not going to complete this process. So so pick any one of those and then click continue. And we just want to look at the next screen. So we're not worrying about getting it right because we're not actually going to fully upload it. So in this screen, you can type in a title for the photo, a description of the photo. Uh, so you can you can put in as little or as much information as you want. But it will uh, give you some guidance around that. So if you're sometimes if you just uploaded it directly from your camera, it might have uh, a, a title that's just a random string of numbers, and it's going to tell you that's not a good enough file name. Like it wants something that's more descriptive than that, so it'll prompt you to to fix it. 
Um, so you do have to put in some basic, you have to put in a title, you have to put in some kind of a description. Um, if you want, you can click on that link, add a description in another language. Uh, that can be really useful if it's a, you know, say if it's something that you think actually might be useful in various different languages and you speak those languages, it's great to, to go in and enter the, uh, you know, a few different descriptions. If you don't do it yourself, someone else might come along and do it. And it can be really fun to watch that stuff happen. If you, if you put in a, you know, if there's like a, a celebrity that nobody's ever gotten a free photo of before and you put it in uh, and add it to the English Wikipedia article, someone from the German Wikipedia might come along and add it to that article and they might add a description. And so it, it can be kind of fun to see your work um, sort of growing in that way. Anyway, once you've filled in this form, this is the step where it would publish. If you go down to the bottom and uh, and click uh, next, if if you were to click it here, this would actually. Oh, well, it looks like you actually did publish it. <laughs> so now. <laughs> uh oh. Unpublish. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's so here's so. Actually, here, okay, so you published something that you didn't want to, so let me show you the, the quick way to get that taken care of. Um, if you scroll down and, and click, scroll down just a little bit, and click that crazy name that you just put in, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, like click where it's a link. This is going to take you to the description page for that. It's hard to be as creative as possible as instructed. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> so now we can see it was, it was actually uploaded. It's actually at the beach. And so the, the best way to get this deleted is if you, you can really click into any section, um, like click the edit bu button next to licensing or description or whatever. And then just put anywhere in there um, you can well, okay, you know what I think actually don't do it this way. I think there's a better way. Why don't you back up one screen? So you're looking at the page and Now scroll down and on the left hand side under tools, I think this is there for everyone. Nothing, you don't, I, I can't do this under history? Nope. Uh, scroll down a little bit, like to the bottom of the left hand navigation. You all can see how often I use commons. Okay, so at the, so you see the tools menu and the very bottom item is nominate for deletion. So you click that and it gives you a nice form. And you can just say, I uploaded this by mistake as a, you know, as an example of how to use comments. <laughs> Perfect. And then click proceed. And the nice thing here is it's going to, uh, it's going to put a tag on this file, so it's, it's telling you the things that it's doing. So if you scroll down now below the photo, you'll see a banner that says it's been nominated for deletion. And if you click on where it says the nomination page, that's going to show you another page that was automatically created by this, um, this wizard. So it created this. The, the text that Sarah just typed in, uploaded an error, that goes onto this page, and this is this gets published as part of a list of pages and files that people have nominated for deletion for various reasons. So in this case, it's going to be a very obvious decision. Someone's going to take a look at it. She said that she uploaded it in error. They're going to, you know, maybe they're going to confirm by looking at the file history that she was actually the one that uploaded it, see that that's true, and just boom, delete it. In some cases, it's more controversial. It's like you know, someone might say, 
this image is too blurry to ever be useful for an education purpose. And uh, various people might have different opinions about that, so you might end up with a discussion here. And uh, maybe it would be deleted and maybe not. Where would people see the discussion? Right here? It, it would show up right here, and it, like over the next usually week or so. Um, so I again, I'm not. I'm. I'm a little reluctant to get too deep into the process of how Commons works because it's it's sort of equally complex as Wikipedia, and it's kind of its own. Right. Well, that's why it was easy for me to make. Yes. Uh, you know, to just sort of click on it with a uh, next without thinking because I have. A only ever uploaded two photos to Commons, and both were of myself, and they were specifically so that I could link to a, you know, a, a, a openly licensed photo of myself on my user page. So whether or not people actually choose to upload photos is, a, is sort of a whole different issue. But may, actually, that, it does come up in every class. So I'm looking back. I think we've missed uh, some discussion in the chat window. So let me try to catch up here. Uh, let's see how far back. It looks like there's been quite a bit of chat. So sorry for getting distracted there. We have a lot of experienced users answering questions, so it's Excellent. ideal. Yeah, I saw that Jade had jumped in and answered a lot of questions during the break. Jade, I don't know if you're still listening in, but thank you very much for that. I, uh, I several that others, too. Before. Yep, excellent. So another zone, if a file is my own work and I own it, and then the keeper of the archive, I have permission of the person depicted and have the email of their permission. Um, why did the image get deleted? So um, I, I'm going to guess. Obviously, I don't know exactly what happened. Um, but it's usually in a case like that, it's because um, it's, beca it's, it's because you haven't demonstrated that sufficiently for the person who's looking at it. And sometimes, you know, sometimes sometimes they're like the, the the person who chose to delete it, you know, definitely thinks that they are doing the right thing in deleting something that hasn't been properly documented. Sometimes you'll run into cases where it's sort of overboard and other times it's it's really it's um, it's worthwhile. So let me just, so this is a, I, I said I wasn't going to get into this, but I think it really is a, a it, it, it's such a common thing, especially for a user photo, that um, I think it is worth uh, worth going through. Do you want me to dive so, back into the browser? I kind of out for a moment. Yeah, why don't, yeah, please, why don't you do that? So the, the, the system that we're going to look at is, it's, it's basically, if, if any of you have ever dealt with a, um, a software ticket system. That's basically what it is. Like if you if you work for a company that has an IT department, and your IT department needs to deal with hundreds of requests, like you know I need a new monitor for my computer. Uh, you know my like my word processor doesn't work anymore. I need someone to reinstall it. Stuff like that. And they're getting all of these requests. And they need to be able to figure out how who to, how to assign different ones to different people and get them all processed. They use a bit of software that that is designed to manage that. And and Wikipedia has something like that. It's called uh, the specific piece of software is called OTRS. I don't even know what it stands for. Um, you know, Open Ticket something or other. Um, but you'll hear hear, few, hear people refer to OTRS sometimes. And you don't really need to know, you don't really need to worry about what's going on in the, like within the ticket system, just like you wouldn't need to worry about what your IT department is doing as, as, at a company. But the way to submit a ticket into that is to send an email. So if you're on Wikipedia, um, what you want to look for is the link in the left-hand navigation that says contact page. Um, Yep, it's in the interaction section. And if you click there, it's going to give you several options that have to do it. Like, there are various reasons why you might be wanting to contact Wikipedia. So this is designed principally with people who don't really think of Wikipedia as being interactive, as being something that they can edit in mind. Uh, and this is one of the cases where even if you are pretty experienced with Wikipedia, you still might want to send an email. So scroll down and let's take a look at the various options. 
So you'll see big, bold headers for reader, readers, article subjects, licensing, donors. So um, I, th I think the, uh, oh, you're going further than I, let's see. I don't, I don't usually come at it through this way, so I don't remember which section it's in. I think um, article subject is probably the, the quickest way to get to, oh, no, not licensing. Yeah. Um, And I think that this one has a section for like there's a like there's a photo of me. So in this case, like like you may be wanting to just upload it. It's a picture of yourself, like for your user page. So you're not really the subject of a Wikipedia article, but that's that's the more common way that is that this issue comes up. So um, so you know I, I you might want to kind of browse through all of these options. But Sarah, can you stop scrolling for a second? Because I think what uh, I'm, I'm saying you like the like the students. You might want to kind of look through this and see what the different options are. But um, for the moment, oh, it was just on the screen. I think it's just down a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. So I saw an email address. Yeah. So there is. This email address, info-en-q at wikimedia.org, is, but this is not exactly the, so that, that is an email that will go into that ticket system. But there's somewhere in here, and I'm just not, it's been rearranged since I've seen it, so I don't know where to look for it. Somewhere there's a, there's a form that you can fill out that explicitly says, I released this photo under such and such a license. I understand that this means it can be used not only on Wikipedia but elsewhere on the web and blah blah blah. And so it so it gives you some sample text and it tells you the email address to send it to. And that's what you should have your friend that took the photo do. And they can send the photo as an attachment to that email. That's really the easiest way to do it. Or you can upload it and leave a note when you upload it that that email is coming. Um, and you don't even have to, you know, you don't have to phrase it in any specific way. But if you say, um, like, my friend took this photo and is sending an email to clear the licensing or something like that, uh, people will understand what that means, and it'll it'll give you like a week or so uh, for that email to get through before anyone deletes it. So, hopefully, that's enough of a of an overview of how that system works to that that people can figure it out. Uh, if someone wants to try that and get back to us, that would be great. And if there's something I left out or if I need to revisit that, I can in the next lab session. But uh, I think I've, I've, I still feel like I've got a backlog, backlog of stuff from the chat window, so I'd like to move on and we're not leaving other ones. So why don't you, how about this? If you have a question up above that I missed and it's something that's still relevant that nobody else has answered, can you just type it in again? Um, or type in, like, please see above, and I'll know to scroll up. And if you have a longer question, I'll know to scroll up and look at it. And otherwise, I'm going to assume that the stuff that, that we've missed has been addressed. OK, so another zone. You have one you'd like me to look at. Um, so OK, so, it's, so you have already done the permission, per, permissions at wikimedia.org thing, um, and it didn't work. So. I, I have the feeling, another zone, that yours might be a, an issue that's rather specific, and I'd, I think I'd rather dig into it offline and get back to you. So, because um, it, it sounds like if you've already tried all of this and it didn't work, um, it might not be something that's really relevant to everyone else. So, uh, if you, if there's a if you could give me a link to where you did upload the picture to, that would be helpful, and I could look into it. And you could leave that on the class talk page, and then I can just answer, answer you there. And if someone else is interested, they'll be able to follow too. Um, so I'm just looking back here. Okay, so it looks like people have, have mostly been talking about this this issue. So um, 
I, I think I'd, I'd like to go back to the OER University article because I saw that people had been working on that uh, going all the way back to the break. So why don't we why don't we take a look at that? I actually, I saw that there was a, a mistake on the page where the references weren't showing up right, and it looks like someone's already figured that out. So that's great. So, Sarah, I think you're pulling up the page right now. I am. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yep. Cool. So I see uh, Agatha Fry uh, was the first to add something into the article. Uh, I'm just I'm looking at the history screen in my own browser. So let's let's start off by looking at the edit that she made. So click the preview previous uh, link on that line. And so we can see she added she put a sent she put some text into the references section. So this is uh, this is uh, this is an excellent thing to do. Adding a reference that is uh, that refers to the topic is is always a good idea. Uh, in terms of formatting, this isn't quite right, but that's fine. It's uh, I think it's 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 always good to, to add stuff like this in, and formatting issues can be addressed after the fact. It's a great way to communicate some information. And I think what's happened here is that, uh, that Glenn uh, came along and, and saw that, and being a more experienced past student, uh, was able to help her through this. So, let's, so in this screen, let's click on Next Edit. Let's Sorry, go back to Agatha's. Yeah. So within this screen where we're looking at Agatha's, if you click uh, Next Edit, now we can and scroll down just a little. So, okay. So it looks like this one was actually um, Glenn added something that's separate from what Agatha did. So he put in an additional reference. And why don't you just keep? Yep. Yeah. Keep going through those. And so here it looks like he added some text. It is possible. And so here, so let's let's pause here. So um, so you can see on the right hand side the, the the additional, the new material that he added. So it is possible to use OER University as an alternative path to earning a degree. That's that's the text that's going in the article, and then you see that ref tag and a bunch of code. So all of that stuff that he put in after that is the stuff that's going in the footnote and is getting pushed down into the references section. So why don't you click on his next editor? I think he made one more. I'm sorry about all the uh, scrolling up and down. Can't help it. Oh, and I guess that is the most recent edit that he made. So, oh no, oh no, okay, I see. So, okay, so I think what happened here, and Glenn, I don't know, are you, I don't know if you're still with us. Oh, it looks like you are. So, uh, you're saying you were experimenting with the Zotero Wikipedia citation function. Okay, so you're using some software that was putting in these edits. That's great. Um, and so it looks like it first put the reference in a weird place, and then you moved it to the right place. Yep, OK. So you put the wrong ref in first and then removed it. OK, great. So uh, I think this is uh, we're, we're moving through some rather technical stuff, and uh, with the you know the slow scrolling and everything through Blackboard Collaborate. Our newer students might have a little trouble following. So just if you are, this is something that I would really encourage you to revisit on your own time, and uh, come to this article, the OER University article, and click on the View History tab, and you'll be able to browse those recent edits, and uh, just the way that you saw Sarah doing it. Click on View History, and then use the the buttons along the left hand side, uh, either the the buttons, and then click compare selected revisions or else the, the comparisons to the current and previous edit. And those are nice to look at these. 
Sorry? Yeah, I was going to say it's nice. It's nice to be able to choose between any two dates or any two edits and then use the compare selected revisions um, button to see what changed when and where and between which users. So if you're if you're still getting used to wiki text and the the coding and the history screen and stuff like that, I think this would be a great thing to come back and look through at your own pace. And if it prompts any questions, please leave a note on the course talk page or bring them to class next week. Uh, it looks like we're getting about to the end of our time here. So why don't we wrap up with that? Uh, I Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. It's been a great discussion. We've had lots of really good questions. And uh, I'm really looking forward to next week when we'll get into the, uh, the final project that everyone can work on in the class, and we can really buckle down. And post your questions to the talk page. We know you have them, and everyone else wants to see the answers, too. So, um, Yes, please do. Please do so. So thank, thank you all very much for coming. This was actually a great session, I think. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.